My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked, red and white, but no such roses I see in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet while well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love is rare, as any she belied with false compare. Now we'll break up the sonnet into quatrains and explain it a little more. This sonnet compares the speaker's lover, could be Shakespeare's lover, could just be a random character's lover, to several other natural beauties, but aren't compliments to his love. Her eyes can't even compare to the sun, her lips are less red than coral, if compared to white snow, her breasts are dun colored, and her hairs are much like black wires. In the second quatrain, the speaker says that he has seen red and white roses, but doesn't see those in his mistress's cheeks, and he states that her breath is less than pleasant and smells nothing like perfume. In the third quatrain, he admits that he does enjoy the sound of her voice and when she speaks, but music sounds much better than her. And finally, he mentions that he has never seen a goddess before, and that his mistress, unlike a goddess, treads on the ground. The speaker still claims that he values his love, as it is rare and beautiful in his own way, not made by false comparisons. Now I'm going to analyze the sonnet further and talk about some of the humor and meaning behind it. This is one of Shakespeare's most famous sonnets because it pretty much jokes about and mocks common love poetry that was written in Shakespeare's day. This humorous sonnet is so well understood and it still remains funny to this day. After reading further about this sonnet, I learned that he modeled it off of Petrarch. His real name was Francisco Petrarca and he was considered a scholar poet during the Renaissance period. Petrarch's famous sonnet sequence was written as a series of love poems to an idealized mistress named Laura. In the sonnets, Petrarch praises her beauty, her worth, and her perfection using an extraordinary variety of metaphors based largely on natural beauties. In Shakespeare's day, these metaphors had already become cliché, but were still accepted techniques for writing love poetry. If read and taken literally, the sonnet would sound like my mistress's eyes are like the sun, her lips are as red as coral, her cheeks are like roses, her breasts are white as snow, her voice is like music, she is a goddess. Shakespeare, being the brilliant writer and poet that he is, decided to reverse everything that was said and make a mockery of the typical Petrarchan metaphors by presenting a speaker who seems to take them at face value and decides to tell the truth. Your mistress's eyes are like the sun? Well, that's odd. My mistress's eyes aren't anything like the sun. Oh, your mistress's breath smells like perfume? Well, mine reeks compared to perfume. The speaker demonstrates his idea that love does not need vanity in order to be real, and women do not need to look like flowers or the sun in order to be beautiful. With the humor of the sonnet set aside, it is actually still a beautiful love poem if you understand the meaning. The speaker doesn't want to compare his mistress to such unrealistic things. He thinks his beloved is as special as any woman that poets have lied about with their false idealizations.